day out here is definitely not going to be perfect. <laughs> going to have some ups and downs. Sometimes things are going to go remarkably well. I talked to several mechanics and they said if the brakes are not locked Sometimes up, things are going to go haywire. <laughs> not going to lock up. So last week, everything worked out great. Prepared the schedule. Empty early, got loaded early. Yesterday, had a load going to the house to pick up. Had an air leak problem. Did y'all see that? Maybe you used to seeing that. I don't know. I hadn't seen that before. Oh, this come from the pilot. I went down into the pilot. Mashed potatoes, real mashed potatoes and broccoli. Did find a shop though, not far from where I was at. That was great. I'm talking three miles. Um, the shop was pretty good. I knew what they was doing. I gotta put the air quotes on that. They found a problem, they fixed the problem. So you hear all that noise coming from back here. Sound like it's back here behind the dash somewhere. Then you might want to just take this up. Yes, it's so dirty and nasty every day. I imagine it's enough to pull up for you can see the, the greasy hands back there working on it. So you pull that up. There's a sensor back there. Sensor. And that's what they replaced. So the sensor yeah. back here. But then I got a tire put on since I was there. Saw some treads showing on my tire. On the trailer. They had a tire there that uh, looked pretty good. And when they put the outside tire on, they didn't line it up. See that? No valve stem access. So, obviously that's a problem. So the lesson is, make sure you check. You get tire work done, make sure you check that you have access to the valve stem for the inside tire. Make sure they put it back on correctly. Other than that, the place is pretty good, man. People cool. A deep, a new, white. Guy had 30 trucks at one point in California. Now he's opened up a shop here in Grand Prairie and cool people. Waiting on load information, checking the oil and everything while I'm here. Want me to be there by nine. It's an hour and well, it's 93 miles away. And it's already in problem. I haven't gotten the information yet. So it's not written in stone that I'm gonna get the load, so obviously I'm not gonna take off on up there.
have much choice. You know what I mean? You got doubles. You gotta make it do what it do some kind of way. You know what I'm saying? First way or rewind? First way? Truck number? Ah, right, boss, you're good. You're going to uh, pull forward. Alright, thank you. agency approved for the disaster recovery uh, and Puerto Rico has earmarked, earmarked some of that money for possible use to cover its share of these emergency expenses that FEMA is going to stop paying and that's actually another reason that Mike Byrne, the head of FEMA here in Puerto Rico, told me that the agency had made the decision to stop covering the full cost because um, the agency knows that that money is on the way and that Puerto Rico will be able to use some of that to cover these costs. Now that's really interesting. And here's Adrian Florido in San Juan, Puerto Rico. Thanks Adrian. No, thank you all. Basically, 
I talked him into calling everybody to try to reach someone who could authorize him to, to do something. And they told him to take one pallet off. <laughs> they said he could take one pallet off. And, uh, through here you got your washers on each side and the bolts actually loose right here you got a plate here and a plate here that has a ring around it and on the inside of this washer there's a oblong ring in it so when you take this loose you can actually rotate it forward and backwards to move the axle oh it's inside it's I'm looking in, at the, I'm looking over there on the other one yeah it's inside of here on oh, both okay. sides yeah and what it does it'll pull the axle forward and backwards at some point or another, it's broke that ear off on the inside, and so it's allowing the axle to move back and forward. Um, more than likely, we'll have to replace the bushing if we put the new pin in, just because with all the movement in it, it's probably gonna more pull that bushing flat, just slam out. Um, but you could get away with just doing the one side, because I don't believe the other side's moved in. Is this something that you've seen? I mean, this I've happens seen, every now and then? Or? I've seen it several times. Is it, so, like, is it just a normal wear and tear thing, or? Yeah, um, the Henderson set up on the bottom of these tra uh, trailers. This wasn't their best design. They only done it for you know a handful of years then before they, they realized <laughs> that it wasn't wasn't all that great. Yeah. Um, they've got one now where it's actually a bolt on the front and it actually pulls it forward and backwards from up there. But uh, yeah, I've, I've seen this before. Is it on different types of trailers, or is it only on the what's it, Stalton trailer? Or I've seen it on uh, Stalton, Wabash. I've seen it on, I've seen it on several of them. Oh, okay. But they only run it for a couple years, and then they. Do you know the years so I can avoid it? <laughs> uh, I don't. Uh. I have no idea the exact years. Yeah. Um, but I know they only done it a few years. Oh, okay. Um, I mean, it's not a, it's not a very hard job. Just time consuming. Just time consuming. Yeah, you gotta do a lot of cutting and welding. Oh, uh, expensive? I would, <laughs> I'll give Jerry, he knows what's going on with it, and he can get you a close quote, but it really just all depends on whether we're going to get in it. What you yeah, do. what you gotta do. I mean, it's always depending Ugh. on what happens once we tear into it. Gotcha, I gotcha. Now, so, is it just, it may affect the to wear it differently or why would it wear just that tire and not the other one beside it? It just really depends. A lot of your weight's gonna be more centered on that inner all right. because you gotta look when you have your weight in the trailer, mm -hmm. it's not normally pushed all the way to the side. Right, so right. Yeah, I got you. It is. Yeah. And so it's gonna center that towards the inside tire. The inside tire is actually sit a little bit lower anyway. Gotcha. Okay man. Appreciate yeah. it. Plate but all the room on the floor and they got already plates welded down in the aluminum floor. What are you going to do with that? He said the guy got rid of it because every time he was loading his freight, they was knocking up the metal plates in the floor. 
I'm telling you, you can call Rodney. His name is Rodney. Rodney got two trailers down there driving. Yeah. And neither one of them is worth anything. You know, he told me himself, he said, Preacher Man, I don't have nothing for you, man. One translucent roof, the other one, and, and look, they got two down there. Yes, they do. They 2007. Let me show you something. You see where you got this? This guard rail here? The guy done went and put plywood all the way on both sides, two trails. Plywood about, about maybe three feet up on both sides with the slits out where you can hook up your, uh, so if you get a load, and let's say you take it, they say it's, it's 101 or 102, you can't load it. Because you got all this extra excess, you can't even load the darn trail. I don't know. Yeah. But this, those are aluminum floors. That's not it right there? Hell. Oh. Okay. It's on both sides of the road. And at the end.